I need a fucking beer. Beers for the boys. Beers, beers for, for the boys. boys. First case for the boys. Let's go. Let's do oh, it. Let's, fucking... let's get funky. Let's go right now. What's going on, everybody? This <laughs> is the burn down. Today's episode, we're going to talk about why does every cigar shop have an Indian in the storefront? One of these guys. We're going to tell you why. Coming up next on the burn down. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode with The Burn Down. Today's episode is going to be an educational one. Yeah, why do tobacconists have an Indian in the window or in the front of the door or somewhere in the shop? What does it all mean? What does it all mean, Basil? What does it all mean, Basil? So today you'll be hosted by Professor Dapper Cigar and Professor Brother Cigar. With a special guest from Chief Tuckahoe. From the native land of Tuckahoe, New York. Of, he's a Tuckahonian. Oh, we, oh, oh. <laughs> is, that, is that the Tuckahonian chant? I don't know if that's from, but I know that melody. That's like the, uh, what's like the Florida like- State Seminoles chant? The, the I chop. Could, I could tell you this. In, in my high school football, we were we were uh, Native American. We were the the arrows, if you will. You're the arrows. The arrows. But our our emblem was an Indian head. And uh, by football games, we go. One person would wear the Indian outfit. They would wear like the headpiece and everything, and would control the whole crowd. And they go, I believe, and the whole crowd would be, I believe, I believe that, I believe that, I believe that we will, I believe that we will, I believe that we will win. <laughs> Absolutely fucking bonkers. <laughs> Do you, you guys did that at your high school? Because I, I feel like I've heard that chant before. I probably have, but I mean, that's what we did. Gets you hyped, though. It gets. And it, if the person who is like the ringleader is, does a good job, you can start like mosh. No, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, the football locker room chant? Just get you hyped. I used to watch. I've seen some of those videos yeah. of locker room chants. I know that song because like one of my coaches gave it to us when we were in high school, and he's like, "Listen to this song. That's why they don't do in college. Hype like, gets you pumped up." So we're like, "We win. <laughs> we and we get hyped." All right, so let's get into this episode. We're gonna drop some knowledge on you. Drop some nuggets, some bombs about why the Native American Indian is associated with cigars and tobacconists. So we, so Eric was kind enough to print out some information for us, and we're gonna go. Uh, yeah. We're gonna give you some 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 nuggets. Yeah, I mean, my brothers got me this for my birthday, and I was like, you know, what does it all mean, Basil? Like, why is- you gonna you gonna learn today? You gonna drop some knowledge? We gonna learn you. We gonna learn today. So we wanted to learn. So we did some research. We wanted to get some information so we can give it back to y'all, to y'all, so you would know just as much as we would know, and uh, some pretty interesting stuff. But before we get into education, the education, the education, education section yet, um, what are you drinking and what are we smoking? So we have one of three choices for 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 brewskis oh, today. We have, we have we have variety today. We have variety. Variety is a spice of life. Perfect. So I have three beers, and I just do we just pick one, two, or three, or are we going to try all three, or what do you want to do? Uh, let's let's keep it spicy. You pick one, I pick one. Oh, so we're, we're not going to try it? Like, you're going to have one and I'm going to have one, or you want to just each try the same beer? Hmm. Let's try the same beer. Ready? I'm going to okay. reach in. Okay, that's fair. Whatever one this is. It's white. It's green. It's the... Ooh, the Woodstock Inn Brewery 4,000 footer. Celebrate each one with a 4,000 footer IPA. This citrusy, clean taste, and assertive bitterness will help you feel better. About dropping your cell phone in the visitor's center toilet. <laughs> That's funny. Nice. From New Hampshire. So, 
uh, up in the mountains in New Hampshire, apparently. Uh, I We're going to try it out. One, two, three. Oh, my God. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm smoking. Yeah, what are you smoking? I'm smoking. This is my first time I'm smoking this one. This is the Tatawahe. Ko, Konu? Kohonu? Kojonu? C-O-J-O-N-U? Kohonu. Kohonu, all right. Kohonu 2012. And you spell that C-O-J-O-N-U. So, uh, already cut it. Had the cold draw. You know I get that sweet hay. Mm-mm-mm. Good cold draw right off the bat. So, I'm excited to smoke this one. Anytime I smoke Tatawahe, it's always fire. And uh, Justin is picking his poison right now. What do you got over there? No clue. Cool. No clue. Cool. I got... I got, I got. Right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive deep into it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Oh. Okay. Not the same size as your boy. Let's go. So, this one... That's like the, oh, this is from this is from Rojas, I believe. Rojas. Rojas. This is the barbacoa, and street tacos. It that says cool? Rojas Street Tacos Barbacoa. So I'm gonna assume. I, so I got this from Luxury Cigar Club, where I get most of these oddball boutique cigars, and I'm gonna assume that Rojas has a line of street tacos. Like a line of street taco cigars. Mm, yeah. And then there's probably a barbacoa, a chicken, a that's a pretty good idea. You know, I'm, a, that, I'm assuming is that. Is that you taking a guess at that? That's my guess. It's my guess. I don't know. But, ooh. Oh, hey. Yo, that smells like... What do you got? Is that a ring guard you have on your pinky ring? Yes, it is. Ring guard. Well, this was my grandfather's ring, and he wore it on his pointer finger, uh, but it doesn't fit my pointer finger. So, I, so the only ring it fits is my pinky, but it's like a... Have you told me that before, or did I just notice that? I've, I told you, I had one, but this is like a much more comfortable yeah, one because it's made did. out of gel. Yeah. And they just kind of, it's like a gel string that they just wrap around. But it's a size, like a half or a size too big. So anyway, but this smells like, oh, it's, there's mm. a very distinct smell. Mm. Just by the way, does it, dude, okay, just smell this. Does this smell like stale beer? Like after a party, smell it. Like the next morning, you go into the basement and there's beer cans everywhere. Does that smell like oh, stale beer? God, it's a terrible smell. But or is that just my fingers from pouring the beer out? No, I don't smell. Some, I I would be nervous if it smells. Okay, like so then it's beer. just my, then it's probably just my fingers from pouring the beer out because I'm like, <laughs> this smells like stale beer. Okay, no, it's my fingers. Yeah, okay. your fingers. Your sticky fingers. So let's light it up. Yeah, because we're we're do we're mumbling right yeah, now. Yeah, so we can spark it up, talk it out, and burn it down because yeah. it's that time. You got that chain hanging out, bro. Do your chain hang right. low? Does it wobble to the flow? Does it shine in the light? Bang. Is it platinum? Is it gold? And you throw it over your shoulder. That's all I know. Letting the chain hang out? No, we're, letting the, we're rocking chains right now. I never, I don't know. I always tuck mine in. Always. That depends how I feel. Today, I feel like letting it hang Tell out. Tell you feel like a fucking gangster. Okay, so before we start, um, we just want to say if you uh, aren't a member already, if you aren't a subscriber already, please like this video, please hit the subscribe <laughs> button, and please hit the bell to be notified for every time you drop a new video. We drop a new video, not you. We drop a new video. We. We, uh, we drop episodes every single Friday. We have videos throughout the week, like cigar reviews and more. Uh, if you're listening, if you're an audiophile, please like, thumbs up, five star, subscribe, follow. Do us a kindness. And check out the website. It's www.burnoutpodcast.com. Become a member. $5 a month to get exclusive discounts and monthly giveaways. Members only. Monthly giveaways. $5 a month. Call to action. Yeah. Out the way. Let's cheers to the episode. This, this glass of beer. It's actually good. Very good. Bro. Drinking beer out of this type of glass reminds that you don't watch it, but cheers. Like Norm. Norm, Norm drinks out of beers out of this glass. We used these before when we did a beer tasting. Yeah. I love these little glasses. I like it. It's a good, like, half beer. It's beer a me. perfect half beer. And that beer tastes good. Shit. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. So, the story of Cigar Store Indian. Tell me. So, here we go. From This is from AmericaComesAlive.com. 
So, in the 19th century, many people could not read, so store owners placed carvings of various symbols in front of their shops so passerbys knew what was sold inside. A carving of a wooden Indian indicated a tobacco store, a red and white blue striped pole symbolized a barber shop, and three gold balls represented a pawn shop. So, I guess back then people really couldn't read or you know understand if they're in a different country, but they could obviously see what certain symbols meant, just like Coca-Cola ah. means soda. So, an Indian outside of a tobacco shop meant we so, sell tobacco. So, it was basically a symbol to... Um to let people know, all right, here's where you can get tobacco. If you couldn't read, because I believe they were saying something about in the late 1800s, most of the, or the average cigar smoker or tobacco smoker yeah. uh, couldn't couldn't read. It was illiterate. Right. Uh, but they still wanted to smoke cigars, so they, they had an Indian. But why, so why was the Indian chosen as the symbol, though? So we know that the Indian represent, it was used as a symbol to represent that this place sells tobacco, but why was the Indian chosen and not a tree or, I don't know, a bicycle or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why was it the Indian? Well, I believe it was the Indians who discovered tobacco. And mm-hmm. uh, so, let's see here. Yeah, I was setting you up to answer the question. Oh, okay. I, thought you were, I thought you were actually question. I thought you were, <laughs> I'm setting you up to answer well, the question. Well, I, I know the answer if you're actually going to ask me. <laughs> but, I mean, you have here the, the use of carved Indians as a symbol in front of tobacco shops began in England in the early 1600s as the ships from America began to bring back tobacco. So um, it was the Native Americans that introduced tobacco yes. to the European settlers that so, came over. So the symbolism of the statues was because the source of tobacco supply at the time was... From Native Americans. Native Americans. So by 1650, tobacco was growing in popularity. And in London, several cigar stores, Indians gave rise to what became a form of signage that was used for 250 years. Damn. So Native Americans brought and introduced tobacco. I believe it was like, I believe Christopher Columbus was a part of that back in the day. I believe uh, something about... Christopher Columbus bringing tobacco back from the Native Americans mm-hmm. and back to Spain. And yeah, he was the he was he was basically the reason why. Yeah, he was the person who introduced because Europe after because tobacco you know kind of a, not origin but originated really in the Native Americans, but then Columbus brought back tobacco, sailed the ocean blue, and then Europe was really where premium cigars kind of exploded yes. and then branched out to everywhere in the world. Yes, it was. So there's a fun fact So they of what they called these figures. So it wasn't until 1617. Where's this from? What website? Give them credit. Uh, this is from Alcation. Al, what's it say on the bottom? Bottom left. Alcation.com. Yeah. So Alcation. <laughs> Alcation? <laughs> dot com. All right. Alcation. Yeah. Like O-W-L-Cation. Got it. Um, so anyway, so... Saying so, obviously, you know, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, but it wasn't until 1617 when small wooden fingers like Chief Tucker over there yes, um, called Virginia men, like Virginia, but with an E and instead of an A, Virginia oh. men. They were placed on tobacconist countertops to represent various tobacco companies. And these wooden cigar Indians were called Virginians. Virginians. Which was the local English term for Indians. So they actually have a name. They're called um, Virginia men. Virginia men, huh? Yes. All right. Pretty interesting. Now this is when. Now this is when uh, Native That's American trivia. Indians, the signs, the wooden figures, cross the pond, as they say. They come into the states now. So it wait, says, wait, they cro- cross the pond. Europe. Then you have America. Oh, oh, so they, so we went to okay. So we're now we're coming back later yeah. on. Now it's like so now it's crossing the pond from Europe into America. So it's like in the eight. This is when we were talking about the late eighteen hundreds when people can't read. And yes. okay, so, so we we start. We told you what it was. We backtracked to the origin, and now we're coming back up. To now the we're beginning. coming here. Okay. So signage tradition crosses the pond. So the colonists also enjoyed tobacco, but initially towns were small enough that townspeople simply knew where they could buy certain items. By the 1850s, cities were increasing in size, and there were more standalone tobacco stores. This is when cigar stores, cigar store Indians, took its place on the American streets. So it started where it was just local shops, like general stores, that had you know tobacco. Or, One tobacco shop, and everyone knew where to go. Right, and it was just, okay, they had an Indian, so this place. But then 
you had said what year was it that they started? Uh, By the 1850s, cities were increasing in size, and they started having just tobacco only shops, like yeah. cigar stores. And was the indu- no the Industrial Revolution wasn't that early, was it? You know, around the 1850s, what was what would be the due to increasing cities? That's probably it, though. It's probably the I think start, 1850s. The start of the Industrial Revolution. Start of the Industrial Revolution. Shit, I know my American history. It's kind of because yeah, because I I watched that history of uh, uh or the men men who built America, and they talk about that yeah, like the 1850s, late 1800s. Yeah. The rise of of the coal industry and the steel industry, and then that sounds about right. Okay, so there we go. Now, what do we got here? Because then I think about it's kind of you know when you think about how. All the technology in the last 150 years, it kind of just never stopped. Yeah. Like the Industrial Revolution. Because think about what happened like in the early 1900s, I mean, before the stock market crash, but then before the Great Depression, like everything's booming. And then after that, now it's the 40s and the 50s. And everything's booming again. People just continuing to expand, continuing to expand. Then we have now we're in like, I guess you would call this like the technological revolution in the last 30 years. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, you know, go 50 years from now, what are they going to call this era? The internet yeah. bubble, the internet boom. Yeah, that's that was yeah. It's I more guess. of like the technological revolution. Yeah, the internet boom was like the early, late nineties. Because now everything is just technology. Everything is tech now. I guess in, industrial, you'd probably. Well, that's when every yeah everyone when, everyone worked in a factory. If you had a job in a factory, that's a good job. And it's like yeah, I work in a factory. I have a good job. I work at an auto mechanic. I plant. wonder what they classify as industrial. Is it just strictly factories? Like it's in the industries. Yeah, it's like I when industries, but which industries? Is it steel or coal? I think like all of it because that was a time of uh, World War One wasn't around yet. But you know, it was. I think that I think that was it. I think it was steel. I think it was wood, coal. I don't you know, know. Massive mass production. I wasn't a history buff. Me neither. That's why I'm an engineer and not a history teacher. That's why I'm sales. Well, yeah, sales. <laughs> All right, so I was an engineer. What else you got over there? Anything else? Anything else? Try so smoke cigars. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we have a podcast. So we have a podcast. <laughs> um. Oh, here we go. This cigars really Here's good. Thanks. So we were just talking about the depression, right? Yeah. Says so America survived the depression, but many wooden cigar store Indians did not, being broken and burned as firewood. Yes, I right? heard about. I actually, read some about did that. survive and were sold into private collections. Many others slowly disappeared over the passage of time. Yeah, so I so speaking of the decline, right? So I got two 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 sections here. So popularity of store statures declining. Beginning in about 1890, city streets were becoming increasingly crowded. Many cities passed laws requiring two feet of open space in front of each store. In addition, tobacconists were expanding their product lines. As a result, many of the cigar store Indians were retired or tossed. Today there, are, today, there are not many left. Those that exist tend to be in museum collections or in private hands. Or in the burn-down studio. Or in the burn-down studio. So, the well-preserved ones by exceptional artists can bring over $100,000 at auction. Mm-hmm. And well, it says right here, too, where why they're so valuable. Because, like you said, a lot of them were burned and broken and burned for firewood. But it said the value of these wooden effigies of a time gone by are rising like the cost of cigars themselves. The passion for cigars and related collectibles reached new heights with the 1990s cigar renaissance. So apparently there was a boom in the 90s um, of cigars. And oddly enough, there's a boom like right now (laughs) of cigars. There is a boom right now. If you haven't noticed it, it's a boom coming. Um, But these... So once again, with that 1990s cigar renaissance, with the boom of cigars coming again, like you said, the 1890s, then the Great Depression happened, and kind of cigars went downhill a little mm-hmm. bit because nobody could afford it. It's more of a luxury. Now they're coming back up. 90s, they hit a high again, and that's when the, the cigar store Indians, these Virginia men, started being collectible again, but you couldn't find them, and that leads into your $100,000 uh, auction. Yeah. I mean, you Pretty mean- interesting stuff, man. Yeah. Now, so it, now it's hit, now it hit, says here today, the cigar Indian became less common in the 20th century for a variety of reasons. So, like I said, sidewalk obstruction laws. Later issues included higher manufacturing costs, restriction on tobacco advertising, increased sensitivity towards depictions of Native Americans, all which regulated the figures to museums and antique shops. Many also were destroyed during the scraps for metal and wood during World War One and Two. Cigar stores, 
figures are now viewed as folk art and some models have become collector's items drawing prices up to this one says five hundred thousand dollars modern replicas of cigar store indians are still made for sale some as cheap as 600 bucks and we got one right here in the burn down studio so i was just reading this thing so one of the most famous um so it says one of possibly the most famous of the native american wood carvers was samuel gallagher Samuel took his employer's last name as his own, which was a Native American custom at the time. Samuel began carving c- cigar store Indians in the 1840s after most of his tribe, the Mandan, the Mandan, was killed by smallpox. Um, his great great grandson Frank is known to be so the man- the Mandan was an Indian tribe. It was an Indian tribe, and his great great grandson Frank is known to be one of approximately twelve. Full-blooded Mandan Indians still living. Wow. Frank now follows his father's footsteps. High skill scars are okay, cool. But um, yeah, so he was one of the most famous carvers. And he's got 12 full-blooded Mandan Indians. Mm. Shit. Chee! That was a knowledge drop for your ass. Well, that was sick, though. So we got our own Chief Tucko. So to summarize... Bring him back to the front over here. To sum it all up. So these guys introduced tobacco to the European settlers that came over in the late 1400s, early 1500s, branching up into the 1600s. And then uh, it wasn't until about early 1600s they started putting these guys on the shops, on the countertops, on the stores to let people know this that couldn't wood, read. Right? It is. To let people know it couldn't read that this shop sold tobacco. Now if people can't read, they know that... This studio smokes tobacco. Hell yeah. And these guys are called Virginia men. Like Virginia, but with an E instead of an A. Fun fact, trivia fact. What is the wooden Indian called? A Virginia man. Fun fact. And what wars were they used for materials? <laughs> World War One and World War Two. That's pretty cool, I think, too, that they had a they were so it makes sense though, they yeah. They were so low on just material all around. They're like, shit. This is a nice piece of work, but Throw it in. We need the wood. Bro, you got to see, um, there's a woman. Her name is, she has a channel, a YouTube channel called Emmy Made. And I think it's Emmy Made in Japan. But she's uh, this woman who just cooks TikTok recipes or Facebook recipes or just any recipe that you want. And she did one from the Great Depression. She cooked Great Depression recipes. Whoa. And it was eye-opening on how little these people had. When she was cooking stuff, she would make a bread sandwich. And I'm like, a bread sandwich? So she would take bread. Put bread in between bread? And she would toast the bread. So she would have a piece of toast in between two pieces of untoasted bread. So that when she bit, you'd have the soft bread, but then you'd have a crunch. And it was a bread sandwich. And she, and she had another one she made. It was a... Uh, it was... I think it was like an apple pie, but it was like the the Great Depression apple pie. So instead of apples and whatever, she used bread. She used toast. She put toast and regular bread with sugar and water and mixed it up. And the, and she she goes shockingly, it didn't taste like a great apple, but it tasted somewhat edible. good, like edible, like a dessert. Uh, I was I was amazed. I go and she was making these things. And I go, man, you couldn't even tell. There were some crazy stuff she was making. That's bizarre. Bread sandwich. Bread sandwich. Yeah, she would put the, the toast in between the bread, and she put, like, butter on the toast, and it was just bread and butter. But she's like, how can you make it a li- How can you make it taste different than what I had yesterday? Yeah, really. It was wild. And she does all these things. She eats those MREs. Oh, those are great. Oh, I always wanted to try one. Oh, oh really? I've never tried one. You ever had a, Have you had an MRE or no? Yeah, when I went camping. You had a, yeah, that's what you brought. MREs? Well... They yeah basically that's what they were they were fr- they were frozen frozen food that you put in a, you put in a, no not frozen I'm talking what, the MREs like the army gets whatever whatever they're called they're 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 I forget like freeze like dried freeze dried dry free yeah they're like they it looks they look like big blocks of like I don't know what you call but they're vacuum packed and you got to rip them open yeah. yeah 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 so you get them for we we got them for camping so we got mac and cheese you got spaghetti and meatballs you got all this crazy stuff. And then we had we had a fire, so you put it in and put it in the bowl, and you put it over the fire, and then you put it back into the bag that it came in. You shake it up and you eat it out of there. And it, 
I thought it tasted pretty good. I wasn't gonna lie. Yeah, they got some. So she does. She does the ones from all over the world. So she'll get the American MRE, mm-hmm. the German MRE, the J- Japanese MRE, the Kazakhstan MRE, the Russian, M- and she tries all of them. The Polish one, yeah, she's like get, dry freezed, and they have all these different packages. It's supposed to be meals. It's supposed to be food for a day. And I'm looking at some of the crazy stuff. I'm like, dang, it, would, it works. I mean, it's a it's a bag like this big. And no, it's got everything in it. Yeah, it's a bag this big, and you can, like I said, you can do mac and cheese, spaghetti, and meatballs, roast like roast beef sandwich or something, whatever. And you boil hot water. You put it. You put it in the bag, and you let it sit for like two minutes. You shake it up, and then it and absorbs all the water, and you're ready to eat it with a fork, and you're good to go. Because she had ones where it was like almost like cat food, like cans. Because they have ones like that where you put the, and then they have ones where it comes in a can, and they have this little fire thing. Where it's a, it's like a flat piece of metal, and you break it off, and it's and it creates a stand. You bend the metal, and it creates this little teepee, and they give you a little candle, mm-hmm. and you put the candle underneath the teepee, and you put your can on top of the teepee, and you light the candle, and it heats the can up, and then you open the can, and you eat out of the. Yeah, can. my brother, my brother had a, a, my brother bought one. So when we, it's when wild. I'm like, dude, I want to try that. Come shit, camping. You should come camping with us. I mean, we were supposed to, we were, so we went, we went. Uh, I think it was like the first summer we did the Burn Down podcast. I remember talking about it. We did it in the summer of 2019. And then last year we couldn't go because of the coronavirus. And then this year, um, yeah. <laughs> that face of me was great. Coronavirus. The coronavirus. The coronavirus. And then this year we couldn't make it happen because my uncle's in Florida, but he is flying up and we're going to my house upstate and doing like a trip upstate to my house. Fuck, so. I love it. But uh, but yeah, it's fun, dude. We yeah, we we hiked like two and a half, three miles. Then you get to the lake and you have to swim like forty five minutes across to the campsite. So you get your you get your little uh, yeah. You have to zip, like put it in a plastic bag and swim across. You put all your shit. You put all your camping stuff in a black garbage bag, and then you have we have these rafts just like this, like a seat that you use for fishing. So you blow that up and you put your stuff in the raft and then you can either push it or you get a rope and you can pull it but you have to swim across the lake and it's about 45 minutes and you get to the, the spot and then you set up shop but it's like and you have to swim back when you go home oh yeah you gotta yeah. swim back it's fucking awesome it's like real fucking how magic. deep's the water it's deep I mean you're not you're not touching the ground it's kind of creepy but and there, yeah there's shit in there you know there's Loch Ness monsters and stuff in there's there. shit in there I mean it's not that gonna kill you but there's no, no, fish no. and stuff that'll no and then most of the fish won't come up to you anyway they'll no but it's the only fun. thing that really comes to you is like a shark, but there's no sharks in a lake. So. No. And there's no. no alligators in that up north anyway. So, If there was alligators, even a, th- a thought, I would not be in there. Oh, no. You wouldn't go in there. The only yeah. thing you have to worry about up north is the bears. That's yeah. it. Well, that we, but you have bear spray and your bear protection. and Well, not even – I don't think we use bear spray, but the way to keep bears away really is um, you take all your food that you brought with everybody. You put it in a sack. Yeah, and you – Hike it put up. up the tree. Yeah, you put up a tree, or you. Did you guys it. do that or no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm you have to. Yeah, but well, yeah. you had bear spray on you, right? I don't think so. You you went camping. You didn't have bear spray on you. I don't. Th- I mean, did you have a knife at least. Oh yeah, you have a knife. You have. Yeah, I you mean, knife's a- not going to do shit with a bear, but I mean, it's better than nothing. I guess it's better than nothing, but you're going to get fucking mauled. Yeah. <laughs> if the but, bear wants to get you, you're going to get fucking mauled. But best I, thing you can do my is my uncle. My uncle's been going up there for like twelve some years, and I always ask. He's like, no. He's like, I've never seen a bear. He's like, I think one year. We heard ruffling in the bushes that we thought was a bear, but we never actually saw it. So I was like, thank God. But Yeah, don't watch that movie. Uh, yes, The uh, Revenant. No, no, there's another one called, um, I think it's like Into the Wild or something. But it's these two, it's a couple, and they just got engaged. Uh, and they, they're going on a hiking trip. And they go into like the woods, and they kind of go like by themselves. And, they, and I think he wanted to take her to a spot, and he didn't really remember the spot, whatever it is, but they wound up getting attacked by a bear, and he gets just absolutely just mauled. Unbelievable. And it's a true story, and I think it was flipped. I think, uh, I forgot which one was in the movie, but one of them gets mauled, and the other one finally, like, makes it back. And then I think in the real world, it was the other person that got mauled. I don't know why they changed it, but it was uh, one of them gets completely just fucked up. Yeah, well, it's like, you know, even with, the like, the bear spray, it's... You know, if you spray it and the bear it doesn't affect, then you're just not you're gonna do. The best you can do is just play dead and hope that he doesn't. That's the best you can do, just play dead. Because you ain't outrunning it. And most people say, "Oh, bears are gonna climb that fucking tree. They're gonna if they want you, they're gonna get you." Yeah, I mean, it's it's easier said than done to play dead. But I mean, you know, I'm doing. If I'm with a group of people, 
You don't gotta be. You don't gotta be the fastest motherfucker. Just don't be the be slowest. Like, yeah, don't be the, last. <laughs> don't don't be be the, the last. slowest, man. <laughs> don't be the slowest. But anyways, that is gonna do it on our episode of why uh, Native American Indians were outside tobacco stores. Why? Yeah, why do you see them wooden figures? Them Virginia men. Them Virginia men. Why were they used? What was it for? It was for symbolism. It was to let people know that, hey, we sell tobacco here. Come by us and enjoy it. So if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell so you get notified every single week, day we drop new videos. We drop a podcast every single week. We drop other cigar and other videos throughout the week. So make sure you get notified. Become a member. $5 a month. You get exclusive discounts. Nova Cigar, CigarOnPipes.com, Read by Vinyl, and Kansas Clean Distillery. And uh, I don't have any more beer left, but I don't have it either. That's Justin. I'm Eric. Thanks for watching. Cheers. We'll see you next time. I got, I got a smidge left. I got a smidge. Cheers. Salute.